Hello, this is Denton Yoder, instructor for BSC 2304, the Biological Systems Engineering CAD class. Uh, this is lesson five. It will be, at least I believe it's five, it'll be about blocks, XREFs, um, also attributes. In that, we'll have to talk a little bit more about scale and layers and things like that. To start with, um, anything that you draw can be turned into a block. In fact, any drawing that is saved can be used as a block. A block is a drawing. Uh, the way I teach it, I usually do um, a W block command and an insert command. And let me just jump in and show you how to do it. So to start with, I have a tree symbol that I drew. And this is my favorite tree. It comes from a job I had 30 years ago. But if I, if I type in W for W block, um, it wants to know what I'm using to make a block, which is going to be objects. I need to choose a base point and I need to select the objects. It really doesn't matter if I retain it, convert it, or delete it. There are some fringe benefits of converting, but we'll talk about that later. It wants to know where you want to put it. Um, yeah, I can leave it on the G drive. I'm going to call this a tree. We need to set our units to unitless. That way AutoCAD will not try to scale it for us when we insert it. If we left it on inches, when you try to insert into a feet civil drawing, it'll scale up 12 times automatically, which we don't want. Uh, but we could have set the units to feet and it probably should work correctly. Okay, my base point, I'm gonna pick the center of the tree. I'm gonna turn my snaps on. I need a center. What other snaps do I like? Let's turn a few of them on. I'll use my center snap. I'll select my objects. It's just a bunch of arcs I drew around the outside. I drew this tree an eighth inch tall because that's the size I like to use it on a drawing. It's an eighth inch tall tree symbol. I'll hit enter. Call it a tree, okay. Um, I didn't ask me about map. I thought I expected it to ask me about map object data. But anyway, now if I do an I, I can browse out to my folder where I'm working and insert a tree. Okay. Since I browse to the hard drive, I'm redefining it. So I insert a tree. I for insert. Once a tree is defined inside your drawing, it's usable anytime. You don't have to browse. By browsing, it redefines it or rereads it which I need if I change a tree. So I'll go ahead and OK again and insert another tree. I for insert. I can change the scale of the tree. Now the way I use this is this tree symbol prints an eighth inch tall. So whatever scale drawing I'm working on, that's the number I put in here for the scale. Typically, I do a uniform scale, so I only have to do one. Or I say specify on screen, and then when I insert the tree, it'll ask me to scale it then. And the correct answer is typing in the scale you're working at. I'm going to type a 2 for 2 scale, but that would be 20 for 20 scale, 50 for 50 scale. And it'll put the tree in so that at 50 scale, it will print an eighth inch tall, which is the way I want to use a lot of my symbols. Not all symbols are scaled like that. Um, another example would be, zoom out a little ways, a light fixture for a building. This is 24 by 48. If I W block this, I'm going to pick a base point of the corner. I'm going to select the objects. And the reason I picked the corner is because it would be easy for me to place it in a, in a ceiling grid by just clicking on the grid line to place it. I'm going to call this a 
two by four uh, light. Make it unitless, although it is inches. Okay, uh, there's the map information. It doesn't matter because there is no map information on this object. The map information uh, you can put invisible data points on, on objects on your screen. We definitely have not learned that yet. So really it doesn't matter. There's no data on it. Okay, so that made a block out of this light. This light fixture is two foot by four foot. Every time you use it, you will always use a scale of one, no matter what drawing you're putting it in, because it is a two by four light. It's drawn two by four. Same thing applies for dumpsters, cars, uh, symbols that are the real size the symbol is. Other symbols are just representative. Um, so here's a benchmark. W block, pick a base point. I like those from the center. Select objects, enter. I'm gonna make it unitless and I'm gonna make its name Benchmark. Okay, so now I can insert a benchmark anywhere I want to use it. Uh, enter to use a scale of one or type in a different scale. Okay, so W block creates the block. I for insert brings it back. Technically, W block creates it and writes it to a file on the hard drive um, for use. Now a valve, here's two valves, so I call this a ball valve, let me do a regen to make it look prettier. Okay, a ball valve, I'm going to W, pick a base point, I'm going to carry it by the end of the valve so that it's really easy for me to put it on the end of a piece of pipe. Um, I could have carried it by the middle, but I just like that better. I'm going to do select objects, pick the objects, enter. Uh, unit list, ball valve. Okay, now, that, now I have a ball valve. Any symbol you draw, you can save it as a symbol. Um, I call that a station marker. Um, where's my iron pin? There's my iron pin. Got a bunch of them to make. W block. Pick a base point, center, select objects. Uh, IP, iron pin, iron pipe. Iron pipe is good enough because it looks like a pipe. It's unitless. Okay. I use those a lot in survey. Um, here's a uh, sewer manhole. I drew this symbol bigger because it's got a piece of text in it and I wanted the text big enough for you to read. So let me check what I made that. Control one. I made the style of text. Uh, I set the height of eighth inch. So the text of the text is eighth inch and the circle I made was a uh, quarter inch. Okay. Uh, Control one is properties. You can open it up anytime you want it. It lets you change that, look at things and change them. But anyway, this is a sewer manhole. I can W for W block. I want to pick it up by the center of it. I want to select objects. And I'm going to call it, uh, short form is SMH for sewer manhole. I'm going to say it's unitless. Okay, now I don't need the map information. Okay, now this one is a question mark. If I edit the text, you'll see it's not normal text. It is an attribute. So I have a tag and then a prompt, what goes in the bubble dude, and then a default value of A. So if I W block, you want to pick your base point. You want to select your objects, and if you have attributes, 
if you have more than one, you want to pick them in the order that you want the computer to ask the questions. I don't care, so I'm just going to hit it. Okay, so that is an attribute definition. Um, and when I make this block, it is a, I'm going to call it a uh, bub or bubble. Or I could just call it, spell it out, bubble. I'm going to call it bubble, do an OK on that. And when it converts it to an attribute, it says, what goes in the bubble, dude? And I can put a 12 in there if I want, and it replaces it with a 12. Now, if I insert a bubble, OK, and pick where I want it to go, if I just do an OK, I get an A. If I insert a bubble again, I can choose and type B. So what this is, is an attribute. Attributes are magic text placeholders inside blocks. Attributes allow you to edit a variable inside a block. Uh, we often use them, well, actually, in civil, you use them a lot. You put attributes on manholes, you put them on power poles, you put them on everything. The idea is when you insert a manhole, you number the manhole, or you insert a power pole, you number the power pole. Anything you insert, you tag it with a label. The idea of that is that is an invisible, well, it's visible or invisible, attribute information that can be exported into GIS or linked to a database. So attributes are very critical for doing drawings. You can also do uh, fill in title blocks with attributes, a lot of stuff you can do with them. I need to make a north arrow. I've got a bunch of them. This is probably my favorite one. I'm gonna W block, pick a point. I'm gonna grab the center of what, right there. Yeah, select objects and make it unitless and call this north arrow. Um, you see a bunch of north arrows on the screen. Obviously, they're all north arrows. You can call them anything you want. You can use any handle you want. I like to have my handle right on a known location. The center of a circle works good. Maybe the point of this north arrow would be a good idea. I don't know. I want this north arrow. And I want to name it North Triangle Arrow. Make it unitless. Okay. So that's North Arrow. This one is called a graphic scale. Now, a graphic scale is an indicator for what scale you're using. Um, I typically draw mine four inches long. The, the first inch I go from basically my scale, like if I'm at a 20 scale, it would be 20 to zero, and then I go zero to 20, 40, 60. So it's, I'm gonna call it X to X1, zero, X1 again, two X and three X um, for the scale. And at the bottom you'd say, scale one inch equals 20 feet. So to do this, I'm gonna W block, pick a base point, I'm gonna carry it around by the corner or some logical place. I'm gonna select objects. I'm not gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the text, but not grab the attributes. Then I'm gonna grab the attributes in the order I want them. I want the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and then the label at the bottom, enter. Uh, I did a base point, I did the select objects. This is going to be, I'll call it graphic scale bar. And I need to make it unitless. Okay. Now it should ask me in order. So if I'm doing 20 scale, it would be 20, 20, 40, 60, 
20 feet tick. And it inserts the graphic scale correctly. If I was working at a different scale, like a, I don't know, 50 scale, I would do I for insert, pick where to put it, and I would do 50, 50, 100, 150, 50 foot. Okay. And I labeled it correctly. Okay, one other topic would be XREFs. Um, any drawing, oh no, before I do XREFs, I gotta show you one more. Here is a title block. Um, I can, I put in R text on here. R text allows you to put in what they call a diesel expression to get a property from your drawing. So I have this thing automatically getting my drawing title, my drawing subject, um, a keyword, the author, the date, time, month, day, and year, and the drawing name are automatically extracted from the drawing. I'm going to W block this. I usually put a title block in the lower right hand corner of my drawing about an eighth inch off the corner. So I made a little marker an eighth inch off the corner so that I can pick that as my base point. And then my select objects, I'm gonna grab all that data and I'm gonna call it title block. So whenever I, and unit lists, so now, whenever I start a new drawing, all I have to do is uh, DWG prop to put in the properties for my drawing. And I'm using the lab number as my keyword. And then I can I for insert a title block and it will automatically fill, fill itself out. Now, if I were to change one of those properties, that would update. Next time I did a regen, that would update. Okay, now XRefs. XRefs are a lot like our text in that it's automatically generated. What an XREF is, is if I am working on a site plan with survey points and I give it to someone else who wants to use those points he doesn't need to open my drawing. He wants to work on his own drawing and he wants to XREF attach or XREF overlay my file. Um, the idea is that when I change my point files, I move some points around, maybe redo some topo, I save my file and send him a new copy. When he puts his copy on his computer, and opens his drawing, my drawing will update automatically inside his drawing because he is referencing my drawing. If you do programming at all, it's a lot like a pointer. You're setting a pointer in your drawing to point to another piece of work. Uh, the two main ways of using it is an F XREF attach or an XREF overlay. Um, if I am attaching you and you are attaching me to avoid conflicts since we're both attaching each other, you use an XREF overlay, which means only XREF one layer deep, don't XREF what they are XREFing. Uh, if you're XREFing in a series where drawing one is referenced into drawing two and drawing two is referenced into drawing three, you wanna do an XREF attach and it'll trickle down Drawing one will trickle all the way down to drawing three. And any changes to drawing one will update on two and will update on three. All right, that's blocks, uh, W block, insert, uh, attributes, uh, R text, XREFs. I think we're done with this lab. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one. Bye bye.